We've uh, recently published um, a, a paper in uh, science translational medicine with um, uh, my colleagues at Boston University, but also with a large multidisciplinary team. And, and I will say that that piece, having a large multidisciplinary team, has really been essential to making the findings that, we're, uh, uh, th that we've made. So this includes um, uh, electrophysiologists and neurobehavioral uh, people at New York Medical College, uh, blast physicists at Lawrence Livermore, uh, University of Oxford, uh, colleagues over at uh, Harvard, and uh, genetics, molecular um, biologists, um, and engineers as well, blast physicists, um, uh, translational neuroscientists. We've really covered many of the fields, if not most of the fields that are required. And, um, really, it took a village to do this. So this work uh, that I'm about to tell you about really um, is the uh, work of a lot of a lot of different people. So what we uh, we really started with patients um, and with the pathology. And as a, a clinician scientist, I, I think that's where we always need to start. We should start and finish with with um, uh, the people that we're trying to help. So we uh, had at our um, as a consequence of the brain bank and Anne McKee's work in neuropathology and athletic injury, um, uh, uh, several autopsies came um, to our attention uh, that involved uh, military veterans um, who had had blast exposure, uh, but also had had other concussive injuries as well. And as a consequence of this, we had really the first case series of, um, of human brains, postmortem brains, from military veterans who've been exposed to blast uh, and or concussive injury. Um, now, interestingly and importantly, um, these individuals had other um, uh, symptoms and other clinical histories. So that's always the case with um, uh, human pathology is um, uh, we have to deduce from the cases that we have what's actually going on. So. Um, it's a small case series, but it's the first one, and it had some very important points. Um, three of the four individuals had post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, all of them had been exposed to blast and or concussive injury. Um, three of the four had also uh, had not just blast injury, but had had either one or multiple other types of injuries. Some of them having, uh, two of them, I believe, had multiple uh, uh, injuries over time, both before deployment and after deployment. Um, and all four naturally had passed away. So um, when we examined those brains and we compared them to a set of um, uh, the youngest amateur athletes studied to date, uh, postmortem brains, and these were uh, late teenagers, early adults, um, 17, 18 year old, 21 year old, um, and I, there was another one of the, a similar age. Um, we saw evidence of chronic traumatic encephalopathy uh, that was virtually indistinguishable between the groups. In fact, from a neuropathological standpoint, they were indistinguishable. So um, what we noticed was that we found early tau pathology in parts of the brain where in this relatively young age group, one would never expect to see any tau, um, let alone this pathologic uh, form of tau. We saw damage to axons, uh, which are the long cables that connect neurons one to another. Um, very pronounced damage to these axons, and we saw accumulation of tau within those axons as well. We saw damage to blood vessels, um, primarily the smaller blood vessels, and we saw tau building up around these blood vessels in a very unusual pattern that is characteristic of this disease. And we saw the tau accumulation in parts of the brain where we would not typically see it in other neurodegenerative diseases, uh, that is, um, the frontal cortex. We see it in a pattern that's very unusual in the valleys um, where the uh, folding of the brain uh, goes into a valley formation. We see it at the base of, of those valleys. And it actually tells us something about the physics of what's going on. And we saw those damage to um, the axons and very importantly, the capillaries in the uh, microvasculature. We call that microvasculopathy. And we knew that these individuals, all of them had been, were impaired. Uh, they had a variety of neuropsychiatric complaints. Um, uh, they had uh, disturbances in thinking and learning and memory. Um, and they made the clinical uh, teams that took care of them and their families aware of these problems. Um, these were chronic problems and they seemed to be associated with trauma. 
So that was the lead off for this study. So first off, we, uh, were, we established that there's chronic traumatic encephalopathy in the brains of military veterans as opposed to athletes. Uh, we showed that it was indistinguishable from what we found in um, uh, the youngest athletes, amateur athletes to date. And then the question becomes, so what, what is the relationship? What is causing the relationship between this neuropathology on the one hand and the trauma? And for that, uh, there's really only one way that we can get at that, uh, uh, um, that question. And with the neuropathology, it's something akin to um, looking at the final frame of a movie and trying to figure out what the movie is about, right? Trying, what is the arc of that story? If you have that last frame of the movie, you can probably figure out if it's a Western, it's a musical, maybe even figure out the setting in which it was done. It's an old movie, new movie. Um, you can deduce a lot about it. But what you cannot deduce from that final frame is the arc that brought you to that last frame. And that's the problem that we always have with neuropathology, is we can't make that, uh, that link. So here's where we have to do animal models. And that's exactly what we did. So um, what, we, uh, what we did is we built a model based on what we know that um, our military service people are exposed to in uh, the recent conflicts in um, Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, these are not new problems. We saw this in World War I uh, with the uh, high explosives um, uh, in uh, the European theater. And um, uh, in the intervening years, we uh, built bigger and better bombs, um, but uh, they still do so the, the damage that um, uh, the smaller bombs do.